Hello, my name is Cathy from The Blue Butterfly. Um, this is uh, a video that's quite personal to me and I just felt it was time to share this because I think it may help other people and uh, that's what I'm all about. This video, what I'm going to talk about today is something that's quite personal, as I said to me, and it's, uh, it's all about reincarnation and um, my own experiences with that um, and something that's come up a lot recently and I have thought about doing this video before and now I've actually been pushed very strongly to do it um, so yeah I'm, I'm doing that now um, okay so I know uh, that many people that know me know that I do believe in reincarnation but I haven't shared this personal story with very many um, but it came up, uh, I'll tell you what happened actually, it's interesting, it came up yesterday um, with a lovely lady called uh, Sita, who I was doing a session with uh, regarding a, a divine counterpart relationship. And um, we were in the midst of it and uh, this Cathar, um, which I'll talk about uh, life for this lady, came up. And the, the thing is, uh, just before we had this session, um, I, I sort of kind of nodded off downstairs. And this often, this does sometimes happen. And then as soon as I need to be online and sessioned with somebody, I spring back into life again. And this is what happened yesterday. While I was in that, the midst of that um, sort of dozing, I slipped into a kind of a dream about um, uh, cathars and uh, that I had before but I've not had that dream recently or or much anything coming up about them but this particular time I did and uh, it was pretty graphic and I sort of shook myself awake and thought right we're, we're on with Sita now so I'll come upstairs and get ready as I do and uh, then this happened and it, it transpired that she herself had had um, these thoughts and feelings and dreams and experiences building up to her realisation, which was confirmed in the session that we proceeded to have, that there was a Cathar past life in her, um, in her past. And also I knew there was one in mine and I didn't know that we probably are connected. We met a while ago on a course um, and with Alicia Brache from Cosmic Gateway. So big shout out to Alicia, or we would never have met. And um, yeah, but we had no idea we had this particular connection, although there's also always been a connection there, which I think Sita would agree with. Anyway, so it got me to thinking, and after we'd, we'd had this session, I uh, went on with the rest of my day, but it was kind of at the back of my mind. And then when I uh, went to sleep, I had um, a very powerful dream and it's one of the kind of dreams that I've had in the past when I was a child about uh, burnings. Not very pleasant, which is why I don't really dwell much on it, um, but I do get these dreams now and again. When I was a child, it was very uh, prevalent. It was very common. It's very regular uh, recurring dream of my myself and my family being burnt and it was very upsetting. So I kind of had a similar dream last night and I've had a lot of heaviness around me at the moment recently, like a heavy sort of feeling. And I slept and slept a lot last night. And then when I was sleeping, I was dreaming really heavily. So it was one of those times, I'm sure you get them when you wake up and you think, God, what was all that about? Although I do understand and I will go on with that in a minute. But also feeling like you've done more work in your sleep than you have during the day and you're just knackered before you even start um, and they are often I find myself uh, past life other dimension dreams so I'm just going to talk a little bit about um, the cathars in a second before I do I know from my own experience from friends who who do similar to me I work similarly to me or don't do the same sort of work as me but have the same belief system or, or experiences that where we are now in this time of uh, upset, disturbance, change, shift, tension, it almost feels it has that resonance of um, end of civilization kind of feel to it. And I know uh, a lot of people have been uh, awakening or whatever you want to call it, 
uh, returning to who they really are, remembering stuff that maybe doesn't make sense. And these past lives very often that are coming to the fore now are times when we have been on the precipice and seen civilizations crumble and seen the end of the world, destruction of the world, um, or our way of being. And although I'm not talking about, you know, I'm, I don't anyway, it's not the way I work, but I'm not saying that we're going to have the, the world end this minute or anytime soon, but it's the way the world works is how it is happening at the minute. We're seeing shift. And those of us that have had lives before that um, saw this kind of situation, uh, my belief, my experience, my understanding is that we have been incarnated again now um, because we have that experience. It's almost like we've been through it all before. So we're placed now to be able to cope when other people maybe aren't coping as well. And also the reason that um, a lot of us are remembering these past lives is because what's going on around us is triggering it. And, and pushing it to the fore. So dreams um, are prevalent, things that you may have had from when you were a child that were coming up and that you've kind of pushed to one side, um, maybe coming back and with that some different sort of resonances. So uh, that's what's been happening with me and I know with many others. So that's why I thought today I would do this. And another big shout out to Alicia Brache and Joe Brooks because um, I shared it on my page yesterday. They did a really good video yesterday, which was very helpful. And again, was spurring me on to do a video because I haven't done one for a little while uh, about the fact that um, I think Joe used a brilliant analogy and a brilliant example of, of how this can all happen. You can be washing the dishes and then just in a second, a sort of terrible dread can come over you or an anxious feeling, or a very happy feeling, or just a feeling of whoosh, I feel really dizzy, or and, and or an image of a past life can slip into your head, or a bit like I did yesterday when I dozed off. Um, and then you sort of have to process that and then get on with your day. It's not easy with all this stuff seeping through. We're here, here, here now for a reason. And um, I'm, anyway, I'm just gonna stop waffling now and just explain. Um, and I'm being very true and honest and authentic with this. This is me. This is how I am. This is how I feel. I'm not a professional filmmaker. I am. I'm not um, somebody that knows everything about the cathars. I'm not somebody that knows everything about reincarnation. Yes, I'm a past life regressionist. Yes, I I know about it because I've learned about it for myself. Um, I'm just me. And obviously, I work within the blue butterfly, and I, and I offer a lot of treatments and uh, sessions, or whatever you want to call them, because I was called to do that a few years ago. Remembering my past lives was a big part of that. Now, so I'm going to tell you just a little bit um, about the cathars, and then I'm going to tell you my experiences. Um, now, I, uh, from when I was a, a young child, um, I'd had certain dreams and uh, these dreams um, when I now I've looked into it and now I've got more information I've, as I've got older were images of a past life. Now a little bit about the cathars and it's great but I worked out who they were because their belief system um, is something that I definitely resonate with and is definitely part of my life and how I feel and how I've always felt and always known since I was a child. Um, that, that that's the way to be. So that made so much sense to me, you know, that's perfect. Um, the Cathars, they were um, a sect of uh, Gnostics. Now I'm gonna give you the definition of what a Gnostic is. And I'm gonna have to read some of this stuff because like I said, I'm not an expert. Gnostics, um, they believe that humans are divine souls that are trapped in the physical world. Um, so that's what the Gnostics believe. And the Cathars were a, and it's what I believe, the Cathars were a sect um, of Gnostics that lived in, um, began in around the 11th century in, in, southern, in, in Europe. And in the 13th century, they were, there were quite a lot of them in the south of France, near to Carcassonne, etc., etc., in the Languedoc in France and um, they lived there and their beliefs 
So who were the Cathars? Again, I'm going to have to refer to my notes a little bit. I do have a very strong sense of who they were. I get their feeling. But if you want to know a little bit more of what we have written down, a lot of the Gnostic beliefs and the Cathar uh, way of being was actually destroyed by the, by the, the, the Catholic Church. It was, a kind of, it was an inquisition. Um, and so we don't have an awful lot of their, their own words but this just gives you a quick of a rundown i don't and, and there's a lot more to learn but this just gives you an idea so they basically they challenge the authority of the very strong um catholic church at that time um they were in the Lang languedoc uh, like i said in the south of france um they believed that there's some wonderful stuff here that it kind of challenged everything that the Catholic Church stood for because the Catholic Church really liked the idea that they had control as all controlling organisations do past, present and future. I'm not going to name any, I'm not going to get into what's going on now, but you get what I'm, where I'm going with that. So they like this control and their belief system was although the there were some similarities with the Cathars, was totally different in many um, principal concepts. So this one is great. The Cathars believed that men and women were equal. They had a system where um, they all lived together as such, and that there was a hierarchy, but it wasn't. It was just. Um, a hierarchy in that those people perhaps were more clued up in the esoteric knowledge that the Catholic, Cathar Gnostic, excuse me, Cathar Gnostics believed in. And they were called parfait or per perfects, okay, because um, they, and some of those were women. So they had women who were quite high up the echelons of authority within this Cathar society. So that's one thing. Um, and obviously in the Catholic Church and in any church, any organised religion around that time, men were in charge. It was patriarchal. It was not matriarchal by any means. Uh, so that was one thing that the church really didn't like. Um, they didn't have any doctrinal objections to things like contraception. You know, if somebody wanted to practice um what the rhythm method i suppose it would be back then um to not have too many children they couldn't see a problem with that they had no objection to that they believe very strongly in um reincarnation they believe that as sovereign uh souls that we were here to learn and as we moved up the line of each life we learn more we learn more from our lessons that the, and the people that we interact with um, so that the church itself didn't know everything. We had to learn that knowledge ourselves and move on and move through. They also um, had no doctrinal objections to things like euthanasia. Um, if, if that was what was felt that had to be done, then it wasn't an automatic, like with the church at the time, like, you know, that's it. You can't do that. No contraception, no euthanasia. Oh, no, you go to hell. No, that wasn't the way they thought. And spiritual individuality was the main uh, precept of all of this in that um, there was no hierarchy as such. There was no man in a pulpit that was telling you. There was no church with all its dogma telling you how you should live. This, um, this spiritual individuality, this learning yourself, your own sovereign soul, was what they believed in. So that gives you um, a little bit of an example of, of their beliefs. Now, as you, as I mentioned, they lived um, in the south of France, okay? And um, Montségur um, is the Cathar siege that many people have heard about, more about that in a second. But what happened to them eventually was there was a persecution that carried on for quite a long time, it began in 1243, went on for about nine months. In 1244, um, the, the French army um, 
orchestrated by the church okay because you know what it was like back then religion and government and kings and queens and the royal hierarchy were all connected so they basically went to this place where they were all living because they they kind of withdrew into these caves around around Montsegur and they went in there and they and there was a siege that I said that went on for nine months and then there was a surrender um, and they were given two weeks and they had to renounce their beliefs um, in Catharism. So 200, I think eventually it was about 210, 215, uh, which also included some of those that had actually gone there, some of the soldiers and some of the people that were around there that had gone there to actually persecute, that had gone there to kill them, that, that were working to uh, drive them into the ground and to get them to leave they actually became closer because they've been there for quite a long time and some of those actually became cathars and stood with them at the end and 210 ish of these uh, people would not give up their beliefs they were then uh, marched uh, down the mountain um, and this was on the 16th of march 1244 and they there were no funeral pyres as such um, they were marched into the flames so they were marched into the flames whole families and that's how they died and they actually wiped them out they wiped them off the face of the south of france the cathars as such I know there may be some now who practice it. I'm not saying there aren't any cathars around because I don't want people to have a go at me. This is just my own personal thoughts on this because I just want to help people with what's going on at the minute. A uh, majority of them and that particular sect was wiped, completely wiped out. Gone. In that minute or in the, that time it took to walk them through, walk them into the flames and they were engulfed in flames. They came down that mountain knowing that. OK, so that's what happened. And this is some of my own experiences um, that led me to look into the Cathars eventually, but it started when I was a child. Before that, I just want to play you, because uh, like I said, a lot of their stuff, a lot of their um, culture and their words and their hymns has been lost. But this is actually, uh, this has survived. And I just want to play you some of this um, now. And this is the hymn of the Cathars. And I thought I had it all set up, but it doesn't seem to want to be there. So just bear with me. OK, I'm just going to play you a little bit of this. This is beautiful. Um, and I'll put the link underneath this video because um, it, the words and the, and the lyrics they're actually, uh, there are the hidden meaning in there, which I'll explain a little bit more of. I just want to hear, let you hear how haunting this is. Bear with me. Don't go away. I'd just like you to listen to a bit of this music. prophecy in this music I mean, if you look at it you Oh, mm -hmm. 
it's very haunting and the first time I heard that um, it just stopped me in my tracks and the strange thing was as well that when I saw the translation I didn't know all of it but some of it I actually understood um, what the words meant so yeah that's 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 a hymn of the cathars okay one of the last pieces that we have still of them there's a beautiful resonance to it and, and I just I can feel um, their energy and I can feel what they went through um, because I'm an empath and obviously because I believe I know I was there so anyway these are my experiences that led up to me understanding that um, when I was a child I used to have dreams and these were dreams about um, burnings and uh, my my brothers and myself um, walking into this fire or knowing that they were going to die and there was nothing I could do about it um, and that was something that haunted me a lot when I was young and the dreams were very vivid um, I don't have exactly the same dreams now but um, I did have them then and also I'd like to say here as well that I do have other experiences of other past lives but this one is coming up very strongly at the moment so I know I need to share it that's something I meant to say um, yes yeah, so I had these dreams um, and I also always had a fascination with uh, castles and I know a lot of kids do. So I don't know if that's because of, <laughs> of a past life or if that's just because that's what kids do. But of castles and of um, a sort of almost fairy tale castles and woods and the way that people were dressed and a lot of, you know, pre-Raphaelite paintings you see of medieval stuff that would strike me as a child and I wouldn't be able to stop looking at them and I had this deep resonance with that. Um, also I have a birthmark and apparently that's one of the signs uh, with people that um, have had past lives they often have birthmarks because the resonance is so strong and it was also traumatic that you carry some of that as an imprint on you like a, a mark or a badge and um, if it was summer I would be showing you but I can't at the moment. Um, when I was a baby, when I was born, I had this pigmentation and it runs all the way down here and a bit on my back um, and it's uh, it's darker than the rest of me. And again, it's a French connotation because it's called a cafe au lait birthmark um, and it looks like a burn mark to the point where I've been asked so many times when I'm from a teenager, you know, when you start going to the beach with your friends and all the rest of it, oh, what's that? Uh, when were you burnt? And um, I wasn't in this life. It came with me and it stayed with me and it, it is very obvious um yeah depression anxiety um and uh, i've had i've had issues with that most of my or well, even before my adult life i look back when i was a child as well it's something that's always been within me and uh one of the things that really used to trigger it when i was a child was um stuff about the end of the world and things about um civilizations ending i remember as a child for example this film being on in the living room and it was about that it was obvious it was a film i mean to be honest it was probably made in i mean i was born in 67 and this was in the 70s so it was probably the special effects were a bit shoddy to be fair but at that age um it frightened me i remember having to leave the room and go and sit out um in a different room and i was shaking and having what i look back on now obviously is an anxiety attack so that was always there end of civilization stuff and i used to have other dreams about that as well um and civilizations crashing basically which again can go back to atlantis and lemuria and, and all that sort of stuff as well and then other this sort of went on and off and i i had issues with depression anxiety blah blah and then fast forward to about five years ago um and i was i'm going to show you this picture i was at work and um you know in my other job you know you get those screensavers and the ones that keep changing pictures and lovely pictures come up and they say do you want me to know where this picture is and all that sort of stuff so that's what um i saw and this picture came up 
and I am just trying to find it because I thought it saved it and it's not letting me see it. So let's just have a little look. Here we go. Yeah, here it is. Um, and this is Monsegur, and that is um, where the, the siege was, um, where they died. So that came up as one of my screensaver pictures and, and I looked at it and I thought, I know that place, although I don't know it. And I remember that when I was a child, I used to draw it, then that came back. And then I started reading about where that place was and learning about it. And I was just fascinated and I couldn't stop looking at it. Um, and then I looked up, obviously, found out the siege and all that, and that started that all off. And then I started having these dreams again that I'd had a, as a child with the burning and the end of civilization and not being able to do anything about it. Around that time as well, this is just little things that came up. I, I went to a bookshop and I wasn't looking for a particular book about the Cathars, but um, it was, I was walking it down and it literally fell off the shelf. And I picked it up and went to put it back, all about the Cathars. And I, I bought it and I learned a lot from that book. Um, around that time as well, a friend of mine, I went to her house. She knew I liked red wine. She didn't know anything about red wine. And she said, I'm just going to buy a bottle and you can have a drink. I probably won't. She doesn't, you know, she's not a wine drinker. I love red wine. So she went into a local wine shop and she didn't um, know what she was buying. She just said, oh, can you get me, give me a decent bottle of, of red wine? So when we went to open it that night and we, uh, I was about to have a glass of it and I told her about these dreams of what I'd been seeing and the feelings I'd had. And she like, she told me, she went, Kath, for God's sake, look at this. Unwrapped it, turned it around. There was a picture of Monsegur and Carcassonne on it. And also um, it, uh, yeah, it was it was made there. It came from there, and we'd actually just been talking about it. She didn't know that, so that was, was one of those things. The dreams were full on again. Um, around that time, I heard that song, um, and then fast forward again. You know, another few years, two years or something. And then last year, I had um, an energy work session with Alicia Bache from Cosmic Gateway, and. Um, as she went in to start the session, she could feel there was something wrong with my feet. My feet were on fire and there was a burning in my feet. She said, I don't think this is physical. I think this is energy resonance. And she was quite right um, because um, the cathars, when they went into the flames, obviously their feet burnt because they were on hot coals. And um, I felt it as she did. And she said she could feel this heavy darkness that was around me that had been with me always that I'd carried through. She knew nothing about the cathars, by the way, but she virtually described exactly what I was seeing um, and what I'd read about them. Um, and we worked through and, and she helped to remove some of that darkness from me. And she was amazed that I'd been carrying that heaviness. And that's really with my depression and anxiety because when after that session I felt that starting to shift um, and I looked even more into the cathars and I and I really felt the resonance there and I read more about them it was like I was feverish learning them because I understood I'd been carrying this that was pretty traumatic stuff that I went through in that life and it had been with me it's still with me you know but um, it's really helped with me understanding my depression which isn't as bad as anywhere near as bad as it used to be so that's that's got something to do with that although I still yeah okay um, and then yesterday, um, we had this session, Sita and I, and, and, uh, and I just knew I had to pass this information on to you. Um, so I hope maybe just my little story here has helped. Um, if you've got anything coming up from past lives, uh, I would definitely look into it. There's something there at the moment for everybody. We're in unprecedented times, but our civilization has been through this before. Uh, a couple of other things. If you look at the Ascension uh, glossary, okay, I'll put a link for that underneath. If you look at that, um, they've got a list there of different times, cataclysmic times in in world history where our civilization has been on the brink and it's been like a trigger point. And a lot of us that have come back now had past lives at those times. And one of them is the Cathars and uh, the persecution and destruction of the Cathars in the 12th century. Uh, sorry, 13th century. And I'm just going to leave you with this. Um, the laurel. Um, the laurel to the Cathars was all about, was their description of 
you know, uh, spiritual progression as we went go through reincarnations, all about our own esoteric knowledge progression, all about our individuality, our physical and spiritual um, connection with all things uh, around us and above us, as above, so below, etc. And um, so that was their description of the laurel. And the last of the cathars was uh, Parfait Gillam Bilibes, and he died um, in 1321. So just remember that date for me a sec, 1321. He was actually burnt at the stake. And his last words, or some of his last words, I mean, I wasn't there, but this is what he said. It was a prophecy, which is also in that music, which I'll put the link to. In 700 years, the laurel, laurel will become green again and the good men and women will return. That was 1321. Add 700, 2021. We're here for a reason. Um, so, yeah, um, I hope my story's helped. Um, I do offer different services, which uh, you can find on my website and I'll put the link for that below. But this was just uh, something that I thought you may um, find interesting and maybe helpful to you. And it was something that I kind of needed to get off my chest as well. So I'm Kathy from The Blue Butterfly. If you think this is going to help anybody, then please share it. And thank you for watching and much love.